Somebody TV too loud. <laughs> What's going on, people? This is BMOC. You're now tuning into BMOC.TV, another episode of The Culture. It's episode nine. I can't even believe it's been nine episodes. Like, y'all been watching us for like nine weeks. Wow. Lucky yeah. you. Lucky you. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of things to talk about this week, man. Last week was a Tupac episode. If you, did, if you missed it, check that out. But this week we got some new new events that's happening in hip-hop. Hip-hop is always at a weird place. So um, before we begin, I want to shout out my co-host, man. Deshana, say what's up to the people. Got to throw the dubs up. What's up, people? Thanks for the support. We back here. I like that W on the sweater, <laughs> man. We finna get into the show. We got some really great stuff today. Well, it's not really for West Coast, it's for Walter, but we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> West Coast Walter. <laughs> we'll go with that. Drew, say what's up to the people, man. What's going on, world? It's Drew. I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. I'm happy. Let's go. He's happy. Well, not Pharrell happy. Just regular, happy. regular happy. Happy than Pharrell. Today was a good day. <laughs> um, Erica from the Radio Fail. Say what's up to the people. Hey everybody, it's E from the Radio Fell. Make sure you go check out the podcast at www.theradiofell.com. Um, and just, you know, I can't wait for the show. Let's go. Check, check that show out. Shout out to too, man. My boy Perkins is live on the show, man. I got to have him on. Yeah, Make Perkins my dude. Wild. He's wild, for real, for real. And last but not least, Mr. Controversial, Mr. Chad. Say what's up to the people, Chad. What's up, everybody? Just want to... Thank uh, everybody for coming out the homecoming. I didn't go, but um, <laughs> want to say what's up all my Smithites. Yeah, happy homecoming week, you know. Falcons got the dub today. I love y'all pictures, man. Ease up a little bit, I right? Ease up just, just a tad. Just with Galages. Galages works. Um, <laughs> cool. So this week, man, a lot of great stuff has happened, man. Let's get into this, 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 this beef or whatever it is. Meek Mill versus Wale. Um, this is the second time we've seen some kind of public um, disagreements between them. At first, it was Meek Mill was mad that Wale didn't tweet his album or whatever. And now, Meek, um, Wale was at, a, was at the Breakfast Club, and they asked him, you know, how everything is with Meek Mill's situation, how he felt. And Wale felt it was a bad move for Meek to come at Drake. You know what I mean? He felt like you bring in, what do you say, a pistol, a, a knife to a gunfight, something like that? Um, oh, and, and then he went this whole big rant that Wale isn't MMG I'm anymore, dead. and he's a, he's a weirdo. I don't know. Deshaun, is, how do we feel about this, man? Does Meek have a point that Wale should be holding him down the interviews, or is he being a little too sensitive? You know what I mean? What's up with that, man? He way too sensitive, man. I mean, he's extremely sensitive, and I think for I think the root of the issue is when you have these forced unions of yeah. these multiple personalities. The first time, you know, I realized it was like the G unit fit, like game wasn't working under Dre, so he forced him into G unit, which was like this primary New York base of close friends. Right. The game wanted to kind of expand and do other stuff, and they want to be locked down, and eventually. Boom, it came to a head. Like, we knew Wale, MMG, we was like, that's a different kind. You know, he admits it, that's a different kind of dude. And yeah. then Rick Ross is the big homie of the crew. Oh. Like, he ain't putting the, I don't, it's just a bad mix, man. So, I mean, you know, but shout out to Ross, though. It's a bad mix, though. <laughs> Erica, how do we feel? Do you think Meek is being a little too sensitive, or does this have a point? Should he be holding him down right now? I, I will admit that, um... Wale, maybe on a radio station, he should have, you know, it's kind of like one of those situations where you can talk about your family and everything, but in public, you like, you're going to hold them down. And even if they wrong, you're going to be like, yo, right. like, it was all good. But at the end of the day, what Meek shouldn't have done was go on social media and aired it out. That's what, that's what the real, like, he should have went to him one-on-one. -on -one. That's My where the problem the fingers. And, and Meek, Meek, like, yeah. so when, when Ross was on the radio, oh, you know, Meek can't respond. He out here getting real money, <laughs> real dollars. So he can't respond to Drake. But he can write a four-page letter, word to Aaliyah, four-page letter <laughs> to Meek Mill. Um, Drew, what's up with this, man? Talk to me, man. What's going on? Yeah, I, I thought Meek would have learned about the whole social media thing after the trigger fingers turned to Twitter fingers. You figure he would have stopped with all the social media stuff, but you know, I guess he hasn't learned his lesson yet. But, um, to play, what, you know, when it started initially, you know, a while back when he had a problem with me, with Wale not uh, tweeting out about his album, I remember Rico Love was talking about that kind of thing before. This is mm -hmm. like about a year ago. And he said that's a real thing in the industry. Like, guys really do have to hold each other down on social media because it's such a big forum now. Right. And when, when dudes don't do that, 
guys do look at it as a favor, and it is something that's you know that's done. Um, Cause I follow different rappers on Instagram, and I say they do it all the time. Right. So it meets the fence, which I don't do very much. It is a real <laughs> thing. I've heard other artists talk about it in the, in the in the past. So, but I do think the way I, I think with um, it was funny because I was listening to Wale's interview on the way home from work. Yeah, um, it was and, I was and I was surprised that. I was thinking while I was listening to it, like, I'm surprised I haven't heard anything from Meek or Ross or anybody about this or nothing on social media. As soon as I get out the car, I'm going to Chipotle, <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I look on Twitter, I'm standing in line, and I see everything that happened. It was so weird. I was just thinking in the car when I was listening to it, but um, I, I do think MMG doesn't have that, that, that continuity right now. And it was easy to see even without Wale even saying anything. You don't see him rocking. You don't see them doing a lot of features. So what he was saying was something honest. that you really paying attention that you wasn't easy to see. While he was being honest, he said how he felt. Ch Chad, what do, you, what do you think, man? Should he been honest? Should he lie? Should he lie for the team? Man, the thing about that is that while when Wally got on the interview, it's it's almost like he threw him under the bus. I mean, it, that's like that's like a that's like talking bad about another teammate. Like he he said he didn't even bring a knife to a gunfight. He brought a pen to a gunfight. I mean he he threw he threw his boy under the bus. But MMG, I mean, Wale don't fit in with them. You know what I'm saying? Like that that whole little team is it feel forced. Like co collabor like when they collaborate, it's not. It, it just feels There's like no it's cohesion. forced. It's, like they don't have a chem they don't have any chemistry together. You know. It's only a matter of time before it break up. And if Wale this Meek Mill, if he put it on wax, I don't think Wale will. But if he did, I think I, I, I think that would end Meek Mill's career, man. Because at the end, we just waiting on the other shoe to fall. If Nicki break up with him, he take one more L this year, it's over. <laughs> hold, hold, hold up. We've seen this before, though. We've seen cats get beat up in battles, and they've came back with hit records. Can, Meek, Meek's a hit away from being back on the charts. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he had a number one album that came out. Is it? Is he that done, the shot is? Is, is, it, is it really, is he on critical condition right now? So I'm trying to think about the folks you were talking about, and it seems like usually they have, like, a good start in their career. I think Meek was picking up steam. I don't know if he has the resume prior to to be like, man, all right, this is just a stumbling block. Like, he's still getting out of the gates, in my opinion, as far as his mainstream career is concerned. So, you can't take that. You know, like, you look at the Ja thing. Ja eventually got ended, but he had, like, a whole stream of hits. Like, 50 was coming on. It was like, okay, I can get back. Right. But with Meek, he ain't got enough, you know, enough skin in the game, so to speak, to be like, you can just get slapped around for the hottest two years of your career, and then, okay, I'm going to come back now. Like, it's going to be some new cat on by then. Like, J-Rock going to have all his, his fans or something by then. Like, mm. I feel bad for I feel, but I feel bad for Ross. I mean, because even though Ross is putting these guys together, Wale, and oh, this is the thing that really got me. They got me hot. So Meek Mill tweets, oh, yeah, by the way, I mean, Instagram, by the way, Wale said that Ross owe us money. If he owe me money, yeah. I'll get it later. You, I'm like, what was yeah. that about? Like, why would you... He, if I was trying to help you get more of your money, why are you then using that against him as a as a beat? I don't, I don't, Erica. I think, Erica, what 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 is that about? I mean, here's here's the thing with Meek. I with Meek, he I can't say that what he speaks is lies because you from Philly, you from Philly, you're yeah, biased. I mean, I'm you're just, biased. I, I mean, I'm just saying like I I can't say that that he, what he's speaking isn't the truth. It's just the way he goes about everything is just very, very immature and makes him look like a nut because he just goes off the deep end and he don't have nothing to really back anything up. It's just that it's like he gets this urge and all of a sudden he's on Twitter and Instagram and just letting it all out. And it's like, yo, Meek, you need to chill out and you need to like take some, somebody need to take his phone away. And, and like, Ross, and like, Ross somebody take, take his phone away, phone. Ross. Oh, oh. Like, Emotional. Somebody needs to take his phone away when he gets emotional because it, it's not it's not good for him. Look at real call Thomas right now. Look at real call Thomas right now. Real, real call Thomas. <laughs> uh, another thing. <laughs> another thing, real quick, and we kind of touched a little bit last week. Like the game has changed, and and it allows for this because it's so digital now, right? Like. Folks aren't collaborating in person as much no more. Like back in the day, you had a label, like you was always under the same roof, same studio. You was building a brotherhood and that beef was real or it wasn't and you was talking this stuff out. So you kind of got a tweet because you ain't seen this dude in like six months. 
So in order for you to say what you're going to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't say what you're going to say and really get it out there because you really be feeling some kind of way. Like, that's where all these manufactured, you know, labels and crews are kind of like separated. Yeah. But, yeah. but you can no, send no, a text out or something. You can send a text what? out. You can send a DM. You can, do, you can do that. Like, you can do it privately. You don't have to, like, yeah. go out publicly. I think, I, well, why why I say you get a number? Well, they well, say you get a number. So, go ahead, Drew. Go ahead, Drew. I kind of think it's like like a label, like a like a sports team. I think you have to you get when when those problems arise, you gotta start at the top. You look at coaching, you look at things like that. And I look at Ross; he's running in MMG, and Ross is a weirdo. So what is he gonna? <laughs> yeah. So 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 <laughs> how what 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 advice? I, I, there was Ross was in the head. Ross had a GQ article a couple of years ago when he was really hot, and pretty much with the guy, they, it was like they were following Ross around. And pretty much he was just saying how Rick Ross really lives in that character of Rick Ross. There's no William <laughs> Robinson. It's Rick Ross 24-7. So if you're dealing with a guy who doesn't even really live in a reality, so everything is a facade. I mean, how can you give some real advice to people going through something real when you don't even really acknowledge who you really are? His interviews you're, are entertaining, though. His interviews are really entertaining. You're Rick Ross. Your MC Hammer. Your Big Meech. <laughs> your everybody else. Lay Hoover. Huh. Where, hey, where, 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 where's William, where's William Roberts to come out and be the boss? Like you, he's around guys like Jay Z, he's around guys like Puff, who can separate the character, the the, the performer, the rapper, right. to the regular person and handle business. And I look at Ross like, what is he going to do to help the situation? Well, if I could be honest and if I could be real, worth the day's loaf. Um, Diddy made making the band. They fighting in on Park Avenue. Jay Z yeah. had state property. They all broken up. And him and Dame Beans. <laughs> I yeah. mean, to be a CEO, you need a failed group. So Ross is on the right path. <laughs> <laughs> Ross is That's doing everything right. correctly. Our <laughs> Ross, uh. needs a failed movie, a DVD movie, and they're good to go. That's straight. So speaking of Rick Ross, the boss. I'm looking at Facebook. I'm seeing a picture. I'm seeing two pictures. There's one picture with Rick Ross and his new fiance. She, you know, attractive young lady. Then I'm seeing the same uh -oh. young lady. Uh -oh. I'm seeing the same young lady in a picture <laughs> with Meek Mill stripping. That's what I'm talking about. That's what. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So, so I'm, I'm assuming the stripping, I'm assuming the stripping picture was before, and then the the picture now was after. So it's basically Ross wiped her up. But before she had a different line of work. Um, Chad, how do you feel about this? Talk to me. Um, they they got a popular catchphrase going around now that say "hoes be winning." W. Man, like that word. <laughs> like <laughs> she um she went from stripping for the crew to being the boss's wife. I oh. mean, she the first lady of MMG. Um, <laughs> wow. I'm really here. I they said you can't turn a hoe. I thought it was Trina. I okay. Don't know. <laughs> you, you, you can't turn the hoe into a housewife. Look like Rick Ross is trying, man. Wait a minute. Before we slut shave her, let's know that all strippers may not be hoes. They may not be paying for sex. It could just be that's dancing. True. So Fair before, we, before we slut shame her, that's a buzzword. <laughs> your whole <laughs> team, your whole team, seen her naked. Your whole team seen her naked. Partially, exactly. Partially naked. Exactly. Like not, not but, like Showtime. But, that, but, that, but, that, go, but that goes back to my point. Look who we're dealing with, Rick Ross. He's running the show. Oh. Look who he just wiped up. That's what I'm saying. Like it's a it's a weird old label over there. Like <laughs> wait, and that's Amor, what it is. Amoria's normal. Amoria's normal. Oh God. He's the, he's the most normal right now. Maybe maybe Stolly, and that's why you don't see him around him. He is <laughs> he is in Ohio. Watching LeBron or something like he's not worried about what they got going on down there. Oh god, man! Deshaun, do we condone? Do we condone this? Do we, as the people, condone this? Ross says it's for the people. Do we condone this as the people? Man, I, if if I knew Ross personally, maybe I could. But nah, man. Like I understand everybody has. I mean, for real, because like Nobody you know, I mean, Ross if we were personally. talking one on one, <laughs> we were talking one on one personally, and one of my boys had a situation. I mean. It's a lot of things going on spiritually. People go through different paths. I don't know what that lady's walking like. So if I had some more details, maybe I could do that. But just based on the fact that that's the, the route you chose, it adds to what me and Drew think about his character. It's like, man, you are so not even in your own mind. Like, and, and it ain't like that's just old her. Like He consistently puts out pictures with her wearing half nothing as of today. Oh, Why they're like yeah. Beyonce. So it's like that's kind of... 
that's his, that's his deficiency, though. He don't have, you know, he's not because, a high character. Because, because it's a fabricated image oh. he's trying to uphold 24-7. And she's, yeah. like, go ahead, go ahead. She's, she's an accessory. When the, the go ahead, go ahead, when, chat. When, when they come to Rick Ross and the ladies, it's, mm. so, for some reason, he stay losing. Like, 50 Cent had, 50 Cent put oh, out the yeah. sex tape with his baby mama, and yeah. then 50 Cent took his other baby mama shopping, and now this no chick weird. is Foxy. Don't forget Foxy. Uh, I mean, he's, he's with Foxy, oh, right? Alleg Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly he's with Foxy. Allegedly. That's what the blog say here. He's, I don't know. He need to stop taking L's, man. Get him from me, um, Erica. How do we feel about about this, man? As 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 a, as a female, well, not a female, sorry, it's the buzzword. Oh, as a woman, <laughs> how do you feel about this? What was going on? To me, to me, it really just shows the insecurity that that really is in Rick Ross and a lot of these <laughs> rappers that they feel oh. like. First of all. First of all, like your wife and this chick, and she was with, with like, well, naked with your mans and them, and partially. it just shows. <laughs> partially, it, it just is, shows insecurity. Like to me, like soon. all of this, all this perpetuating images and all this, uh, like I want to show you how much money I got and how pretty this girl is on my arm. All that shows is insecurity because you're not really your esteem is not high enough, so you need to do all this. To, to make it seem like you that guy when you really you you a lame like you a fraud. You so, know what, like, Erica? I, in the words of Cali, you small. You small. <laughs> no, you are you you a genius. New world. <laughs> word, Take my word. money. Take my money. Here, have my house. Buy your mother a house. Buy the mailman a house. Um, crazy. Uh, so anyway, I don't I don't know. Shout out to Ross, man. I hope Ross is happy. I mean, at the end, oh. you know. Go ahead, Chad. Oh yeah, well I was gonna say at the end of the day, man, is um for Rick Ross to be like his stature in the game, like you know, uh, he if he wants to be respect respected, having your having those pictures come out there, man, it's just it's not a good look, man. That's just it's just <laughs> bad, man. And um, I you know I I would I I've always went on the record and said I would date a stripper. Or you know, I would wife a stripper. You yeah. <laughs> but, but like not not a stripper that's been stripping for my peoples. Come on, man. That's like that's next that's next to smashing the homies. As G, as, as G would say, what's the difference? What's the difference between just you know she she's shaking front BMOC TV or you know KOTD? I don't know what's the difference. What's the difference? It's all that's, that's another point about being the boss, right? Like. If Ross was really a top oh. life and had some pool, um, you reach your limit on that. Had some pool, <laughs> those shooters don't get out. If Beyonce ever was stripping for some way or Diddy's wife, like them Man. people don't get out when you the boss. Like, hey, check this out. I know this is what she was doing, but we not going that route. Whoever got phones, we doing phone check. Whatever it is, my fiance's picture phone check there. Like for real, like you know, but that just. That's just that whole weird. The, 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 he the, the, may the, have forgot. He, he may have forgot. He may have forgot about it. He probably like. Shit. Forget. You don't forget. You don't forget that. You don't forget that. He could have changed a lot. He could have changed a lot. Um, He's frauding. They are frauds. frauds. <laughs> oh, that's, what I said that's what I said initially, man. He's a weirdo, so it's a weirdo label, man. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't like personally. I, I don't mess with MMG. I really but, okay, don't. okay, okay, hold up. Okay, speaking of weirdos. Okay, is is Rick Ross a weirdo? Yes. Yeah, you're a fraud. You're a fraud. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's he, he, he's an imposter, <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's not a. I don't think he's, he's a weirdo. He's an imposter. As Ross would say, most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. You dig? Um, Meek Mill. Most if definitely. He, if you're a weirdo. Definitely a weirdo. Most definitely. I everything like the Ross. Most I, I, I say Meek is just really immature because like I said, I really I, I can say that Meek is a real one, but he just don't know how to go about it. Like he goes about everything very young mindedly. He's very immature. Yeah. I think he's, he's emotional. He calls exactly. comments, yo. And I, I like that music. I like Rick Ross music. I like Meek I like I like Meek's music. I just think Meek goes about it kind of the wrong way. It's a bad Yeah, it's like nobody right. told him. Nobody um, told him how to Okay, Wale. Is Wale weird? A weirdo. Most definitely Meek. He's a good weird, though. 
I think he's weird in the sense that you will never fully understand him, but I think that's good for a rapper. You know, like I think he can come from different perspectives and you know he be in his feelings and stuff like that. But I mean, just like Drake can be considered weird, but I like to have some different perspectives. I think it's the other extreme to have Ross, who's not showing you anything, not letting you in anywhere, and then some artists let you in too much, which make them look weird. I'd rather too much than not true, at all. True. Okay. The thing okay. about Wale to me, play chat, play chat. The, the thing about Wale to me, I was a big Wale fan when his first album dropped, and really? then I got on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> I then I got on, I got on Twitter, and and I start following uh, Wale. And, and I realized, I'm like, yo, this dude is different, yo. Like, Twitter was Wale for me. I was following him. He started beefing with Rosa Acosta. I'm like, she's a model. <laughs> like, why are you beefing? Why are you going back and forth with her, dude? Just leave her alone. Like, I was. Just, it just changed me, you know, my whole perspective of Wale. I was not cool with him I, after that. Ahead, well, while I first, when while I when Nike boots and all that was out, that I forgot that was called. When that was out, I was living in Maryland, so you know, oh, that okay. was here. That's just, okay. and so I was hearing a lot about him, so I was listening to him. I was like, okay, so I was checking him out. He made good. While he does have talent, like he, he, he's, a, he's a good rapper, but so I started following him on Twitter, and after a while, like, yeah, this guy's go <laughs> go crazy, you know, you know, so <laughs> a little. And, and, and it, he's just sensitive. And and it turned, like I remember, do you, do you guys Very remember the situation? So. Do you guys remember the situation he had? I remember media take out report the story that Wale, I don't want to get too graphic, sexual things with a girl that you know people laugh at, and what? he, um, I've never heard he, of that. He, yeah, he he well, yeah. So he responded <laughs> on Twitter. He responded on Twitter saying, "Yeah, this is why I got." Shooters or something like that. Oh, like you wanted to, yeah, he man. took it to a, he took it so left because somebody said he was in some girl's DMs talking about he likes to eat something. Okay, I, uh, you know what I'm saying. So, his response was like, "I got shooters." So, like, what are you talking about? Like, it was weird. I wasn't, I wasn't a Wally fan until November. <laughs> I just kept it in, I keep it in a fuck. I hate it looking at me. I hate it not looking at looking at I ain't looking at nobody. Um Nike boots, I ain't like none of that. He was giving me over a little bit and then um I liked the last mixtape and then the last album I, I liked a lot. So I'm I'm a new Wale ish fan, but before that I was not playing Wale at all. Um okay, who else? Amorion. Is Amorion weird? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why is Amari on there? Erica, Erica, you talk. Yes. 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 Yeah, no, he's a weirdo. Like, he, <laughs> I lost all respect for Marion on Love and Hip Hop. After Love and Hip Hop, I just, I can't. Oh, no, 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 no. Love and Hip Hop, Love and Hip Hop, here's this girl, here's this girl, she's a pretty girl, home birth, he's shown to be a father, he's, he's working. What, what's wrong with that? I don't think he's anything so, he crazy just on so there. Corny. He just looks so corny to me. Like he's so corny and lame. It's just like, oh, yo, like you really, God. you're not a. He lost his attractiveness to me. Like I used to like him with the, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know, back then. But now you went the bump, bump, bump. You went, you went the bump, bump, back, back. You went the cornrows back. The cornrows not coming back, Erica. Erica, I'm sorry, Erica. Is that cornrows? Like, oh, now he he's just a weirdo. Like he's a little lame to me. Like him and Lil Fizz. Like I just like they they look so lame. Like, like yo, shots so cool. everywhere. Shots everywhere. What kind of expectations do you have for a dude named Lil Fizz? Like let's be real. That's what he That's what he's from Cali though. He's from Cali. He's shot us. He's from the hey, W. Shot us. Hey, we got thirty six million people here. I ain't holding them all now. Sure. Okay, who else? Um, is Stolly? Stolly's not a weirdo. Stolly's normal. Uh, yeah, I say he's normal. Yeah. So I mean, like he ain't in the fray though. He like he ain't in the fray. Like, do do people really know Stylies with MMG? Yeah, like, not because really. You don't, because if you don't want to be around weirdos, you not gonna be around. <laughs> so if you be normal, yo, so he's not around. Yeah, I don't know. He well, buys sneakers. I okay. So my thing about the whole Meat Mill, I still have some hope for Meat Mill. He can come out with a record and get back to where he needs to be. I think the last album wasn't that bad. It wasn't number one record, which people overlook because of the whole beef with Drake. I don't. But this is the thing. Any any MC right now is gonna beef with Drake is gonna have a very hard time selling records. I'm just talking about the politics behind the scenes 
as far as how much power that he has, I would not want to mess with him. Not that's what Wale was saying. That's a more skill level. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm talking about the deals and stuff I see behind with the Apple and the he got thirty million riding on him. He don't gotta sell nothing. Like, mm -hmm. like I would not mess with Drake. This isn't a rapping contest anymore. This is a sponsorship contest. Right. Me, I, know somebody, some writers. I know somebody that some could take writers. him down a couple of notches, though. Who? Who? k -Doc could take him down a couple of notches. Nah, man. Okay, mm -hmm. skill-wise, skill-wise, Kendrick Lamar can probably rhyme better than Drake. But Kendrick doesn't have the corporate backing that Drake has. It's almost, night, it's almost night and day, almost. And, and, I, and, you know, and, go ahead. Go ahead, Deshaunas. And, and, we, and this was just yesterday. We was at the gym, Drew, and some of the boys talking about this same exact battle. And, yeah. you know, one of, one of the homies, AC, was like, man, somebody need to just go in. And we was like, it's not that simple. I mean, you yeah, saw what the Jay and Nas. And more importantly, too, I don't remember a time where someone gained an advantage by dissing first. Like, because everybody always <laughs> waits on a rebuttal. Like, everybody's like, okay, that diss was a crazy. Cold war. But it what, is. Yeah, what, it is. what are you going to say now? And so with them two, they both got some heat. And so whichever person this is first, kind of, okay, you out there, but you lose ground because we all want to know. You, you put your chips on the table, and now they just get to rebuttal everything you say and go mm. more. So, I mean, I See, think what, that what, can what either I, way. I, what, I, what, what I was saying was I felt like I felt like Meek, Meek had a window for him to really get at Drake. After he dropped, after Meek, after Drake dropped Charged Up, yeah. he, the, he, he had a window. He had a window. And he I waited for a day. <laughs> People, everybody waited. People were ready to see it. What, people were ready for that match. Meek at that time mm -hmm. had a hot album out that everybody was liking. He had a window and he didn't take advantage of it. I think he had a chance to make his move and he didn't. Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let's just say hypothetically here. What if Meek had a diss record, but for some reason he couldn't put it out for a corporate business reason? What if he's being blocked and that he can't respond? Like, like he's being punched picture. with two hands behind his back. What, what if? Let's just say, what, what if that's the case? I can't picture him having nothing hot enough or personal enough for him to block it. Yeah. Like, like, if the reference track didn't get blocked, everything else is on the table. Unless he got some crazy videos or something True. anyone to see. True. But the reference tracks got leaked, so everything kind of should have been fair game. And well, that's where coming at Drake is a loss because. Like, to me, every time a battle was won or, like, was the next level, it was something personal. Ether was crazy bars, but he had personal stories about Jay that they had about each other that took it over the top. Same with, like, 50 going with Ross. Like, like we were saying, like, Drake got so much out in the open. Where are you going to come from? you going to say that he, like, soft or he got go – like, it's nothing you can say to the fans is going to be like, wow. So then he just goes – Deshaun, he did go that way, though. Yeah, he did. He did. He, he told a story about he told a story about the dude yeah, peeing on Drake, but no, I'm about I mean it didn't work. It, so it was the delivery. Yeah, it I'm was saying, the, but it was the delivery. Exactly, it was the delivery. Yeah, yeah exactly, like that yeah. that that yeah. this record was bad. Like it don't matter what he was saying. First of all, you really couldn't even understand what he was saying. It sounded like he recorded <laughs> it in the memo <laughs> section of his iPhone. <laughs> like it. It, just, it was a terrible. It was a terrible song. Whether it was a it was, disc record, we waited a week for it. It, it was a. It was a terrible a meek song. For it. A meek for it. <laughs> it was too. And, and that's what I'm saying. It was too much skits. See, I, I think the thing with he, if he went out, if he, him and Kendrick, I think that is going to come to a head eventually. And yeah. I eventually. think one, I think one thing that meek that Drake was able to do against meek, I think what, Drake was able to cue his way through it. Because yeah. Meek went about it so bad. He thought, if you listen to Charged Up, and I was telling the shot of this yesterday, if you listen to Charged Up and Drake saying, whoa, and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> that's not going to work. In this <laughs> you're not going to really go all the way through this. Please, like, somebody get an ear, please, please. You, you, you're gonna, get you, look at, look at, look at, That's not going to work. Because Ken, Kendrick is going to come. Yeah. What, and what, he's what, not going to come. Because Kendrick is going Go ahead, Chad. Kendrick's won that shot. Kendrick's won that shot. So even like, I don't know if y'all been paying attention, but like, Hopping. you heard the the J Rock song "Pay for It." Like yeah. to me, like man, the, like he was to me, he was coming at Drake on that, you know, because you know this a shot from a relevant henchman. Like the bars in that man, he was man. Like I'm scared for Drake. I don't think Drake want those problems, man. I, I would stay away from it. It's gonna come. It's not gonna come now. 
I think, it's gonna I, come. I, I, I think what Kendrick needs, and unfortunately this is the case, Kendrick needs another commercial success because I think To Pimp a Butterfly is the best album that came out this year. But it's not one of the highest selling albums this year. It's actually one of the lower tier selling albums that came out this year. So I think he needs more corporate bracking to really have a fair advantage. But if, the, if they had a fair advantage lyrically, Kendrick is lyric, lyricism eons, eons ahead of the game. Um, so, 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 so let's let's here look, Erica. Let's switch. Let's switch gears. Um, Bobby Smurda. Smurda. Smurda, murder, whatever. In jail, um, got some, got caught with oh. guns, got caught with guns in the studio. I think the bail is like two million or something like that. L.A. Reid was on Rap Radar podcast. Shout out to those good folks over there. Um, and and L.A. Reid was like, we're not in a position to bail him out. Like I know y'all uh-huh. used to the CEOs bailing out the DMXs and the ODBs and the Shug, you know, Tupac and Snoop Dogg, but we're not the same. We're not making enough money to to bail him out. Um, Chad, do you uh-huh. think? that the label should be doing more to try to bail him out, or is it their fault? You know, they didn't have the guns. What, what do you think? Well, uh, from from the label standpoint, with the Bobby Schmurder situation, I think it's one of those situations that they really can't touch because you got all these you got all these corporations, and, you know, they can't just go out and spend $2 million on to bail a lot of artists because the, from what he was saying on the interview that I watched, he interviewed him from jail, um, that that the, they want the whole two mil, not just the ten percent, not the collateral. They want the whole two mil. So yeah. a company is not gonna a company is not gonna take that two mil loss to build um somebody that's kind of considered to be more like a one hit wonder out of jail. You know what I'm saying? So the company is they they don't want to take that risk. So that's why they just sit back with their hands tied right now. Deshaun's, what do you think, man? Sh- should they? They chat for some good points. Yeah, man. Like last year, you know, I had a three million dollar bail in the school district bail. <laughs> <laughs> and, like if, if his auntie and mom and them, you know, ain't piecing up, which they probably are to get him out. It's like, man, that's that's an excessive amount of bail. And I don't know the whole story, the whole situation, but it's just like, man, these rare opportunities come, and you cooking. You got to kind of be careful. I mean, I just think it's, it's a business standpoint. And unless there's something come out behind the scenes where he got like a brotherhood with somebody and, you know, something going on. But just on the surface, it's business, man. Like, you mm-hmm. can't. And I think it would set him up for failure because if they bailed him out, then we'd be talking a couple years from now how he'd be talking about how they owe him money because they bailed him out and start taking money back. And, like, it's going to be a whole messy situation and they just need to sever ties and. And keep it moving. If the label bails you out for two million, better believe that's coming out of your royalties. Like that's just on <laughs> top. He hasn't Shows made the, He hasn't even made the two million yet. His budget probably isn't even two million. Um, <laughs> Drew, how you feel about it, man? Yeah, uh, you guys made great points, and I, I do agree with those. My only issue was kind of with me, me and you what we're talking about on Facebook is uh, these labels they don't make they don't make a lot of money when these records are big and successful. Man. Talking about the things that get you arrested, so that's to me that's where it gets slippery. Like if you, yeah. you know, hit, and the, that that record is about killing people. That's all that song was about. <laughs> and the you know, so, so, you know, you know, in the you know, in the dance, you know, made it you know get even bigger. But as far as the content of the record, they're in the hood, and there's a song about dudes who get busy in the streets, and that's all it's about. So when you're able to promote that and you're when it's lucrative, it's all good. And then when those same things that you are promoting, that you're making money from, comes to real life, and now you have, you can't help them. To me, that's where it gets a little weird because but, at the same time you are promoting the same thing that got him locked up. But like I said before, ter- uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger has been terminated for like 50 years. Arnold Schwarzenegger has been shooting <laughs> people, murdering people. He's not being caught in his house with guns and asking Universal Pictures to bail him out. I mean, that's he's not his an actor. That's he's not an his actor. life. And, by, and these rappers are actors too. <laughs> they but are. I, yes, they are. But, oh, but his, they are. Yeah. They're actors. But, but the set, but the set that he's an actor. His set was his real life. Like he's he's from Brooklyn. He was in Brooklyn in the hood where he lived. We just made a point where we know, uh, you know, he doesn't have a lot of money because he only has he has a single deal. He doesn't have a Deal, yeah. Records. He's not making. He's not selling a bunch of records. He's not making a bunch of money. So I doubt he. He doesn't live in Jersey. He's <laughs> still in the hood. Like so. 
like that's so his so his set is that his run that's just so he has to go back to the same people in the same environment that he's talking about. Drew. Arnold Schwarzenegger's going to Beverly Hills. Drew, <laughs> can, can I can I counter that and say on the other end, it's like if you're doing dirt with your crew and they're like, all right, we all doing dirt, but if you catch your body, you gotta just kinda eat that and then we'll see you when you get home. We'll take care of your people. Mm. I'm gonna make sure your mom and them is good. They have a little you know, so they're, 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 they're with them. They're in jail. He's not gonna take care of his family, man. No, no, they're only jail with him though. Everybody named <laughs> right. Shotty got a body mm. over there. Body got a body in the store. Well, Roddy and Shotty are all with him. Um, Erica, how do you feel about it? Let's go talk to I you. mean, it's it's two sides, you know, because it's the professional side. No, they don't have to bail him out. Like he 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 said what he did, what he did or didn't do, and he landed himself in that situation on his own. But it's this other portion of it, this whole perpetuating this lifestyle thing, where these corporations and labels are essentially using these. Right. these Bobby Schmurter was like a kid, like they kids. And they using them, and they jumping around like coons. Like I, I y'all, I, y'all remember the audition <laughs> video? Yeah. Like, come on. Like, as a black man, like you know, L.A. Reid. Like, as a black man, you should. Somebody need to step, take, take, smurt a little smurt to the side and say, listen, this ain't, this <laughs> not, this not cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, somebody yeah. needed to take him to the side or something, you know, to to explain to him because he's like he's really just perpetuating this lifestyle, this negative lifestyle that uh, actually lands you. Right where he's about, right where he is. So well, and, and this is my thing, and I, I agree with it. I think a lot of labels do make money off of these artists. Some people get exploited, and I, and I get all of that. I get it. But what part of the marketing plan did the label put together for him to have guns in the studio? Were they, were they shooting a video in the studio? Like this happened. This happened separate of the marketing strategy, right? Yeah. So I'm like, at what point do the artists take responsibility for their actions? And the and the people take responsibility for their actions because they're buying into it. Because this this hot boy video was three million views before the label even came. The label mm-hmm. didn't create Bobby Smurda. Yeah. Bobby Smurda created yeah. himself. So I I think everything that you're saying it is true. So at what point do we say, well, Bobby, they are using you, but you're letting them use you? Well, he doesn't know. But how do you, but how do you know the ins and outs of music? Business? How do you know how that works? He doesn't smart know enough, that. He's smart enough to get a, a, a good camera and, and shoot a video and get a budget. He's smart to do that. He's smart to not put guns in the studio. Nah, the you, can't be, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't be you can't be smart on Monday and then dumb on Tuesday we get locked up. He can't he can't be a exactly. genius. He, he, can't, he can't be a prodigy kid on Monday, but then a dumb kid on Tuesday. He got to be one of the other. He wasn't a prodigy. He can't get a funny dance. He was having a prodigy. That dance is hard. He's not Stevie Wonder. He's not Stevie Wonder. He threw his head in the air and did a dance. Like, he caught it. He caught it. I don't. <laughs> Jack, he's not don't, a prodigy. Yeah, I don't blame the labels because um. Like you said, the labels like come along and exploit like these uh, kids, like the Chief Keefs and uh, the Young Dirks, Young Dolphs, all those Chicago rappers and Bobby Schmurders. It's like they're already doing this in their neighborhood. <laughs> Nobody told them to do this. They're already doing it. About a week ago. So if you're already if you're already doing something, and somebody comes along and try to give you a check for something you already doing. Do it. You know, you 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 you're willing to you're willing to go ahead and just take that check. The label didn't. The label didn't like it. Like Walter said, the label didn't create Bobby Schmurder. Bobby Schmurder was Bobby Schmurder before the checks was involved. Music Soul Child was taking they, the bus. They, Music Soul Child was taking the bus. They, they came along. It was like, yo, you like taking the bus? Here's five million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's the pressure. You, he was already doing that. He was already taking the bus. But see, that's when, <laughs> when, when it comes time, somebody needed to step. Because I'm sure around Bobby, nobody is telling him anything. Everybody's right. just using it. Somebody, even though they don't have to, somebody needs to step in and like, listen, kid, man, this ain't caught a body <laughs> about a week ago selling go, cracks since you was in fifth grade. Like, you know, that's not good, my man. Like, you need to do something else. Like, Erica. somebody needs to... Where, somebody needs where to are the parents? Erica, where are the parents? parents? And Erica, you're saying that, that basically the radio failed Bobby Smurf. That's the point. That's the I'm just saying that. And, 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 and people, and people, I don't y'all to get it twisted. We're not laughing at this young man's incarcerated. We're not laughing no. at that. We're just saying, like, and I, I get what you were saying, and I, and I completely agree with it. I do. I feel like back in the day, you had Death Row. You had Suge Knight bailing out Tupac and Snoop Dogg, right? But the corporate part of it is that they were selling millions of records 
before. They could use the royalties they were already making to bail them out. Bobby mm. Smurda hasn't True. generated enough money to be, be bailed out. It was his fault, and that's what he was doing before mm. he got with the label. So, I mean, I get the label part, but it, a lot of it is the artist. If, if there's some blame, is there blame to be shared? Bobby got 89% of the blame. You, 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 yeah, you, I mean, you, for one, you have to take accountability for anything you do. Everybody that's does. Absolutely. So, I mean, so, yeah. so, that, so that's, that, to me, that goes without saying. I agree with you with that, Walt. You know, and I'm, not, and I'm not saying who should bail out who or anything like that. I just have a problem with that dynamic of you making money off this kid's lifestyle. Like, this is his reality. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, man, you, this is, for instance, it's like, and like Erica was saying, you have to have somebody kind of help him to show him. It's like, kind of like how Jay Z's approach with, with the sports with the, the uh, sports agent thing. Yeah. Like these kids don't know any better. Somebody has to more than just give them, giving them the money. You have to show them how to handle the money, handle what comes along with the money. Give them a plan. If you really, if you really yeah. do care about your art, the first thing that these, mm-hmm. these label all these, these label heads do is go, yeah, you know, at our our company, man, it's a family. It's a family. It's this. It's, it's, it's a family. That's what he's so be. A product so that you're he's a he's a product that you're trying to sell. And they said so be. We like, a family. Throw the throw the rock up. Throw the rock up. <laughs> yeah, and it's not a family. It's, it's not really. It's sad. So you know that, that that's why I feel like L.A. Reid is a veteran in the game for a long time. He's done a lot of things. So yeah, you know I'm sure he has a team there at, over at Epic who could do something. I don't know. Like you know the guy artist somebody you can't hand you can't hold people's hand through life. I'm not saying that. But I just have right. a problem with the the glorifying and the promoting and generating income off of this kid's lifestyle. And then when something goes left, he has nobody. Because he had nobody in the first place, and you found him anyway. He didn't have nothing. Yeah, it's now like, he's back to square one. Sure. He, said, he, said, he said it was a family. It's more like Puff Daddy in the family. Um, yeah. All right. So moving along, um, Kanye, Kanye West. So oh my God. so Rhyme Fest, which happens to rhyme with Kanye West. I don't know if that's a you know. Coincidence or not. In any case, Rhyme Fest comes out in a, a documentary that came out uh, this week, basically saying how he's been writing for, for Kanye. We all kind of know, you know, that there's been some collaborations, whatever, uh, going on with Kanye and a lot of writers. And basically, Rhyme Fest talking about how a lot of people have been ghostwriting for Kanye West and how he feels like they don't get the proper respect or credit. You know, Rhyme Fest is like, I wrote Jesus Walks. Jesus Walks, by the way, Kanye West is one of his biggest songs, was actually a Rhyme Fest song. Kanye, Rhyme Fest found the sample for the beat, wrote the verse, gave it to Kanye because Kanye was already popping with the production in Def Jam, and then the rest is history. And so Rhyme Fest is like, man, I'm writing all the hits, and, and I, I got to figure out how to pay my light bill, and they are $20 million, you know, $20 million mansions and stuff. So, um, Erica, how do you feel about this whole ghostwriting thing? Hmm. First, first with, with how do you feel about artists who have ghostwriters like, like a Kanye? How do you feel that the ghostwriters are being treated in the game? Well, you see, I, I personally don't have a problem with ghost writers. I'm not, you know, one of the, the purists that, that that hate the fact that rappers have ghost writers. Is, is I like great songs. I respect the craft of, of having great songs. Um, but on the other side, I think the fact that ghost writers aren't getting their due is the ghost writer's fault because in your contract, you should be getting the right due. It should be you should have your numbers set up correctly. You need yeah. to get a lawyer and get everything set up before y'all leave the studio. Do the split sheet, handle your business. Like I, you know that you can't. Like who can you blame but the 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 writer? Ask Cash yeah, where my yeah. check be. Problem yeah. with y'all? I said directly. Shout to me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the go off for what the go off for what Erica said. I'm on the other hand. I am a hip hop purist. <laughs> um, I, everything you said. I did. love hip hop. <laughs> um. Hip hop music is is you know that's that's my culture. So when it comes to the truest art form there is, if the words you're saying over these tracks are not your own, you are a fraud, and I can't really respect a rapper with a ghostwriter unless it's a rapper that we already know uses a ghostwriter. For example, Easy E, um, oh, here we go. Daddy, Puff Daddy, Dr. Dre. You know, they, they, they will admit that, you know, they don't write their own bars. But we know they don't write their own bars. <laughs> exactly. And, um, but, like, what, in Kanye's situation, um, if you listen to Rhyme Fest, actually, Walter, you actually put me up on Rhyme Fest. We were in school. You told yeah. me to check him out. He was dope. Yeah. And I checked him out. And if you listen to Rhyme Fest's albums and his schemes, you hear a lot of Kanye 
in that, you know, so you can pretty much tell. And um, Consequence is another one who writes yeah. rhymes yeah. for Kanye as well. Consequence. But I mean, but when it comes to the to the um, breakdown of who gets what, uh, Erica is absolutely right. I mean, you sign the contract, you know, it's either <laughs> it's a one time thing. You write this song for ten stacks. You take the ten stacks. That's all you get. I mean, you agree to that. You can't sign a contract. They didn't want to renege on the contract. I and, mean, and, and I get, I'm going to go to the shots in a second. I, I, I get all that. And, and me being a, a big contract dude, I get it. But sometimes you have to, you have to sign a contract that's like, if you don't sign it, we're just not going to use you. It's kind of like, I mean, sh should, I, should, I, should I get this Skittle bag that they give me right now? Or should I, should I hold out for the big Thanksgiving meal? But I may not even get the Skittles bag. Um, Deshaun is hollering <laughs> me, man. What, what, do you, what do you think about it? Man, so great points, man. And, and to me, like, I don't know if I'm more upset because I'm a purist or because like it's the wool over my eyes and I'm upset because I didn't know. Santa right? Claus. So, <laughs> Santa, Santa, Santa Claus is the real. Like Santa Claus. Right? <laughs> That's That's real, man. Man. And so we were having this conversation <laughs> as it pertains to Kanye. It's a couple things. One, like Kanye ain't no like his rhymes were never like lyrical no. commercial. It, it wasn't lyrical commercial. So no, I connected no, no. with you like it was dope when you were like me and my girl at the buffet at KFC, like Pete Polo, <laughs> like all those things weren't dope, but it was a personal connection. So if you weren't even right nose, like I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like it don't it don't really resonate the same. And then when you talk about being a producer, like it's a lot of dope producers. And yeah. so right now we have to assume that Kanye, of course, is one of the dopest producers, but also, what made you a mega star and not just Swiss Beats, you know, or one of the other dope producers of our time, is the fact that you had them hits and Jesus Walks came and you had that pizzazz. Right. Without those hits, then you are just another dope producer that maybe you left after, you know, the Blueprint era. Maybe you were just doing some small projects in the shy or whatever. We don't know mm -hmm. what. The Deshaunis, we can't hear you, man. Deshaunis is blacking out. All, all, all I see is this on the yeah. street. <laughs> Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. I can't, yeah, I can't so see I'm you just what, what... Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. I just can't see you. We'll keep talking. Oh, yeah, I can see you now. Keep talking. Keep talking. So, so I'm just saying what put him over the top is those ghost, is those, is those ghost riding that put him over the top. And so you got to give credit where credit is due. But I think he has opened himself up to question everything. We were talking about ghost producing. Like, if you go to that extreme and you have that many tracks that are written and you're not giving proper due, and I don't know what you've really done and what you haven't. So now we got to question it all until we really know. Well, this well, we, and Drew knows this too, and I think she guys know this too. So Kanye has a, a team of producers as well. Um, mm -hmm. That was under him. Hit Boy was under him. Travis Scott does beats under him. It's a lot of different cats, and so not even the the producing part is kind of in question. He's kind of like the conductor, if you will, like. Um, not really mm -hmm. making it hand-to-hand -hand beats, but having to make the beats for him. So it's a lot of collaboration and stuff like that that people just think, oh, we see Kanye West's name, we think he's in a room somewhere doing the beats on the NPC, getting a pen, and writing his rhymes down. When that's but that's happened. how great songs happen. Like, great songs yeah. don't just happen with one person in the room right. writing a hook. Right? Like, that's rare for that to happen. But yeah. great songs happen with collaboration, with being like, all right, yeah. let me mix this with that. Hey, you, you put this on the hook. Maybe you, that's how great songs happen. Like, you're yeah. not going to have all the top always. 10 hits. No, all them top 10 hits on Billboard, they have multiple people's hands in them. It's not one person. Hundreds writing. of writers. Hundreds. Like a factory. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's but, not but, no but, one person. No, no, not really, but. It, Jesus Walks wasn't no 50 people. It was like all rhyme fest and then Kanye was not like that. It ain't like, okay. And Consequence. Well, I should have well, Consequence, consequence was somewhere in the room. Consequence was in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Drew. <laughs> Well, come on, well, to uh, reply to first, what, you know, what he was saying also, what, uh, what Chad was saying. So I forgot the exact number he said, but remember what Q-Tip said as far as uh, industry rules of 4,080? Record industry people are shady. Record industry people are shady. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, so about the paperwork and all that, and if you a guy that's trying to, get in, trying to get in and you got, you know, you wrote a dope song or you wrote some, some you got some dope hooks or bars right. or whatever it may be, or B, you're not going to know what to do, like, these people like if you want to go with some Def Jam execs, you sitting there, you ain't been nowhere. You don't know what to do with these people. Yeah. Uh, so that's hard. And then as far as Chad, like what mm. you're saying, with like I, I feel you, Chad, as far as being a purist of hip hop and all that. But I'm asking you a question. You're a Wu Tang fan, right, Chad? Definitely. Yes. So w. my favorite Wu Tang, my favorite Wu Tang album is Supreme Clientele. 
And okay. it's pretty much widely recognized that Ghostface didn't write a lot of screen clientele. Oh, oh, man. Oh. Man. I didn't oh. know. I didn't oh. know that. I, oh. I mean, I gotta do my Google. I gotta do my Google. Cap, 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 Capadonna wrote a lot of that. Capadonna, yeah. And you, li and you yeah. listen to Cap, you listen to the Pillars, you listen to, you listen to uh, him, period. I believe it. And it hurt me because I love Ghost. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? So I left work to meet Ghostface Killer one time. Like, Ghost is my dude. He signed my screen clientele. So when I found that out, that hurt me. But I still love the album. So that kind of changed my perspective a little bit I'm on Ghost Fighter. I'm about to do my Googles. I'm about to do my Googles. I can't, I can't jump. I can't jump. But, but, so. it's, well, when, when it comes to stuff like that, it's, all, it's always rumors and stuff like that. But to, until it's actually, like, proven, though, I just got to rock with my artist because um, I heard that... Uh, I, I I mean I heard that J, J Electronica wrote and uh Stick Man wrote for Nas. Okay, oh, okay. Like, wait right. a minute. Right. Nobody was writing right. for Nas, you know. And, but, and, that, and, that, and that's you know, what I'm saying. Like Nas we, is my we, favorite we, we, rapper. We, we've detoured. We've detoured here because well, that's right, what right, they but, 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 but back to Kanye, bro. As far as Kanye goes, yeah, so Kanye, like, Kanye. Kanye said before, like the, the traditional way of going in the studio, me making some beats, bores me now. So, me personally, as a guy, as a guy who makes beats, you know, and studying these guys, especially Kanye, he's the reason why I started to make beats, Kanye, and Alchemist, and Just Blaze. Right. And I, I, I know Kanye's patterns and stuff like that. And to me, the last album that when you look at, not only just credit wise, but also just the sound of it, the last album to me that Kanye really went in just production wise was Graduation. Besides, mm. I can't tell me nothing because D, the DJ Two did that beat. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you listen to that album, I hear Kanye's drums, I hear his pattern, I know the kind of chops he uses and how he samples. So that's to me the last album. Because even late registration, he did that with John Bryan. That was a collaborative. And album. see, and but the, th the thing is, and, and I and I I have seen this before in the studio, and but Tim Lynn did this before too. You can have a team of producers say, you know what, guys, you want to produce for me? Study late graduation, uh, late registration, study graduation, study college dropouts, study what I'm trying to do, just add a, a little something different to it, a little something that's going on nowadays. So just because it sounds yeah. similar to him doesn't mean he's actually doing it because Danger was under Timlin, and Danger's yeah. beats sound like Timlin, mm, but something yeah. different because these guys... It sounds a little ex different. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not Timbaland. It's like, but it's like yeah. Quentin Miller. When Drake found Quentin Miller, he mm. said that he was trying to make his sound. So instead of knocking, dude, like, oh, you sound like me? Okay, well, write it, write the song how I would write it. Flow on it how I would flow on it. Say the album mm -hmm. so I would say it, and then I'll just piece it together later. So there's a million cats who sound like Kanye. And who and can a, just beef it up. It happens. And in Kanye's defense, too, Kanye got it to where he got based on Ghost Production, based on what his work with mm -hmm. you got. That's if true. You listen, that's like, if, you listen, like, if you listen to Papa Was a Player, on that's on that's on uh, Lost Taste for Nas. Kanye doesn't get the credit for that. Kanye made that, that beat. They collaborated. You know, my, my they exactly. collaborated. Right. You know, so I mean, it, it, it's a, it, it's a, it's kind of a rite of passage in the game. You kind of have to do. You know, so. So well, it, I'm 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 gonna go I'm gonna go around. You made some good points. I'm gonna go around the room. Erica, do we take away Kanye's legendary status because he may not be producing everything and, and writing everything? Well, how do you no, never, never, because I think what we need to do is stop saying just because somebody had a ghost writer or a ghost producer that that means they can't produce and they have never produced and they have never written because that's not the case. It's just for collabs. Like like you said, he's getting bored in the studio. You you know, you, it's just better when you when you can collab and make something great versus just being by yourself all the time. So I definitely don't think we should take away take away to take away people's dues because like Drake is. Drake is still a great songwriter. Just, like it's not like Drake never wrote anything in his life now because Quentin <laughs> Miller may have written a few songs. You know what I mean? It's like nah. Like it's like you as an artist and it, especially as somebody that's not only like make but you're really producing the music, producing the sound, and really understanding like okay, you 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 put different people on different things. It's bigger than but just writing a couple bars. You, you know you know I'm, I'm gonna go around and say you know what's so funny about that? Music is the only industry. We can get bored with something and then get help and it's all good. Like you can't be the Olympian and be like, you know what? 
Do a back flip to Boris Lee. <laughs> I'm gonna have him do it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but do a football? Throw the ball just Boris Lee, making twenty million dollars. Okay, somebody says like, like the music is so it's just so weird. It's like you can have eighty million writers and, and be in Fashion Week and, and do all these different. Be an astronaut, have somebody make your beats, and it's cool. But if you would have played on the baseball court, oh, I was tired of throwing jumpers. So I had somebody else collaborate with me. This is jumping over. You got to keep the creativity but, going, but, man. The creativity. Like, you got to keep it going. If, it's, if, it's, you, if you get bored, maybe you should give it up. I mean, if you bored, no, exactly. it's not somebody else. Step but it's, it's, something it's, different. It's, 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 it's show business, though, because you look at a different angle. Like, for instance, my man Lance is one of the best comedians you know, out here right now. And he, you know, he, you know, he talks about, you know, for instance, like Kevin Hart. Mm-hmm. Kevin Hart as a team of writers. You go to Kevin Hart's show, those guys will come out. Another one. Him. Another one. Write Kevin, write Kevin mm-hmm. Hart's shows. If you, if you look at, like, for instance, like you look at in movies, like Good Will Hunting, that was what Matt Damon and, um, and uh, Ben Affleck, yeah. right, wrote yeah, that. Yeah. It's, you know, a lot of people say, well, Ben Affleck, not so much. That was a lot of Matt Damon. You know, so it's it's not just rap. It's, it's 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 show business, period, because it's hard mm-hmm. to put together albums, mm-hmm. put together movies, to write television shows, to do Why our so, uh, do our HBO stand up com you know mm-hmm. stand up specials. Sometimes and not that you got bored, but your own but you have to think out get outside of your own mind sometimes. Otherwise so, you can stay mm-hmm. here in the same box. Ma- Ma- so to, so I will make fun of Drake about Quinn Miller right. because I Oh, that, the reason why is because I don't think Drake's that dope anyways. I'm not going to be a hypocrite like, <laughs> like, I don't like Drake's music no matter who wrote it. I don't like how it sounds. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So go ahead, Chad. How do you feel? How do you feel about hip-hop purists? My thing is, is um, um, everybody, you know, might have a, a, a collaboration or some help. And my, my, my thing is to the extent of what happened in that studio. Like, did you like were you writing bars and then somebody like came along and said, "Nah, maybe you should say it like this or or, or set and scratch that bar and I'm gonna say this bar or somebody like handing you a sheet with sixteen bars on it that they wrote and yeah, you spit in that, right. yeah. like you know, cause, like I mean, some somebody can come along and say change this to that. Or maybe you should give you an idea for something to help your already generated idea and may improve it, but or is or is it the one hundred percent creation of another entity, and right, so, that's plagiarism. That's right, fraudulent. On. So the shots, I'm, I'm about to ask you a question. I'm about to give you all a scenario. So I've been in studios, and this is the most annoying thing to me. I'm in a studio. They say write this song. So I write a song for somebody. I've wrote, I've written two ball, I've written two verses, the hook, everything's fine. Somebody comes in and says, you know what? Instead of saying I'm in love with the girl, say I'm in love with the girl, right? So instead of saying I'm 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 in I'm in love, say I'm whatever well, that was that was the same bar. Um, so instead of saying I'm in love with the girl, say I'm loving the girl. Just just change one word. So you do splits, and now you have to credit this person as a writer. So then mm-hmm. a person can go to an interview and say, hey, me and BMOC wrote this song, and we co-wrote it together. So it's almost like and people are going to think, oh, we, he must have wrote a verse, he must have wrote a verse. And I'm like, no, he wrote literally two words of a hook. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of diminishes the, it kind of diminishes my credit while giving them credit. This shows how you feel All about right. that. See, I, I feel like um, if we're talking about rap, I feel like that's, that's, that's too picky. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not talking about that. Like, I mean, we, we don't mind like when... It happens. No, I know it does, yeah. and I don't. I don't mind that. And and see, this is the predicament it puts me in. It's like when I'm a, a fan of Drake's music or a fan of Kanye's music, and I have to cake for you without knowing, like, because I didn't like his last <laughs> his last project, right? And I'm like, man, if Drake wrote the first three albums, I don't care if he didn't write this last one, like, you know. Like, and so now I gotta start yeah. picking and choosing, and that's why I like the position it puts me in, because I was looking at Kanye's <laughs> track list, and now like. Okay, I didn't, you know, I didn't like Jesus, so if he wrote Jesus. I'm still, and it's too much going on. And and the yeah. biggest thing is, it's a competition. I mind in competition. I don't mind if you take steroids to work out at the gym and lift weights. I mind if you take steroids to edge out somebody else in a league that's competitive. Same yeah. thing with rap. We talking about top five, top ten. If Kanye is edging out somebody else in the top ten and they can't get on because you got this team of dudes, then that's one thing out of a million that me got right. Don't compare me to you if I'm. 
if you're telling me I'm not that lyrical, but I'm writing everything, and you lyrical with a team of writers, like that's what bothers me as a Which, competition and who's been edged out. And and another thing too, mm. and Kanye, listen, listen, this isn't a bash Kanye thinks. So I respect Kanye. I think Kanye's one of the greats. I'm um, doing it, but Kanye West is the one of the award shows pointing fingers at people, taking awards away. Yeah. I'm a talk ish until I'm out of hits. Oh he, man, he, that's he, 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 he on a song with Ron Fest saying, "I'm a talk ish until I'm out of hits." You know, to taking people's moments and respect art, artists and musicianship and all these things. Well, he's definitely a hypocrite. But, 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 fam, the award you getting, you made that a hundred percent. Did just stop. You know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying though. Like maybe you should just chill a little. And I like, I like uh, Kanye, but maybe you should just not do that. Go ahead, Deshaunas. I, I, I was going to say, and then he kind of like a throw cats under the bus. I told Jay I did a song with Coldplay. Next thing you know, like he's throwing oh, cats under the bus. Yeah. Don't have ideas. So if Jay would have been petty, like, you know, I wanted to have a ghost writer like Ron Fest, but next thing I'm like, <laughs> what if he starts throwing it like, come on, Kanye's my dude. Like, I'm a huge Jay fan, but when you take that, like you said, persona with, with the rap sheet, they better meet up or else, you know, like, you can't be. Yeah, I just, I just want to, I just want to know who rhymed apologin with holiday. Like who wrote oh, it? Oh man, Kanye. No, no, that's it. That's it. Kanye. <laughs> but, you know, like, <laughs> how many writers did it take to write that? Was it ten people in the room then? Or when he said Makai Pfeiffer was it in too deep? Like, oh uh, yeah, I just, no. Like, who wrote that? I don't well, know. Yeah, well, I, I, I look at it like I said when I, when I watch Fade to Black and you watch Jay, you watch how Kanye put together Lucifer. Like that, you can say, well, Jay Z got a Ghost Rider because Kanye. You watch that video, you watch that movie. Kanye's putting the pieces. He's giving Jay Z the melody. He, you can tell Kanye that, that, probably already had. That's the hook. That's the hook. The hook is is is, nah, is uh, He's not saying the bars. Lord forgive him. He got the fuck. Like he's not saying that. We know he didn't say them bars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I gotta get these doubles. Stop my life. I mean. But that's but is that would that be considered? What if somebody like, well, yeah, I, I helped Jay Z write that record? He wouldn't be lying because that, Kanye, Kanye's influence is all over that song. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And you, and, and you, and you hear and you, and you, and you, and you and like you remember the one part he was like that night them niggas died. Like you can still Kanye kind of like had like a record already yeah. with that. So you don't know what well, he took from that. Let's hope Kanye wrote the part he was trying to write for Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> like we don't know if that's Kanye's flow or I don't, we don't know. And if you listen, and if you listen like the blueprint, you listen like you listen to uh, Never Change. Like Kanye, that's Kanye on the hook. You listen to like Got Nowhere on the First Day of Property. That's Kanye on the hook. Like, he's making these beats and yeah. coming up with like these super dope hooks that are like, on classic records. Like yeah, I hope. Like as as, as Obama as Obama said hey, tonight. Kanye no. is nice. As, as Obama said the night he was about to get elected, he didn't know. And they asked him, you know, you think you're going to win? And Obama was like, I hope. So yeah. I hope that Kanye is right most of this stuff. I hope Kanye is a genius, so respect to him. He is. So, so the shot is brought I up mean. something, too. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. By, by, by the way, everybody, Kanye is dope. He's giving us classic okay. albums, classic he hits. Is. Great. This, this isn't a Kanye West problem. This is just. No, a, no, it's a not. Fan perception of the industry. So we're not yeah. picking on Kanye. Kanye is a poster boy because of his success. That's Kanye, 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 Kanye is a legend, a consensus legend, and every circle. I, I and I, I'm moving a lot of music circles. Kanye um, is one of the most respected artists there is in hip hop. Absolutely. But I will say, I will say, if he makes another Yeezus, I might put a question mark on it. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. There's a lot of people putting out sequels to albums, and Yeezus shouldn't be one. Um. Uh, so speaking speaking of sequels to Please. albums. Speaking of sequels to albums, the game, Doctor, the documentary Woo! part two. Woo! Like my segue, like my segue was so. So the documentary reached two and the documentary two point five. Deshaunas brought it up, wanted to talk about just the game. Man. Oh my gosh! Like Deshaunas, since you, since this was your topic, man, you know, talk to us. How do you feel about these albums from the game, man? Man, I, I feel like you know the game is one of them dudes who I'm kind of proud of him because he stuck out a rough patch in his career. Like the game didn't have to be here, man. Like he had a lot of stuff going on. I always thought he was way too, you know, he one of them emotional, inconsistent dudes. Where at first it was like his persona didn't meet up, but this album, oh. like, see, 
what I like about the game is I love students of the rap game, and that's what yeah. he is. You can tell because he's he's borrowing flows, he's mimicking people, and it's all right because he's writing in bars. It's like man, I can listen to some big and do that, and you know some nods, and but he's delivering when he does it, man. man. I, I'm in the minority because I love the 2.0 a lot more than the 2.5. I think it starts mm. off strong. I, that's what I'm saying. Oh. I think it starts off strong and it's dope. But yeah. I think what I'll say finally is the game. Like, there's a lane for him. And me and Drew was talking about this. Everybody is like, I'm not going to miss you if you leave. It, it, it's a lane for the game when you look at his his disc, you know, his disc and his record. It's like, yeah. we like the game being here in spurts and kind of delivering it. To do yeah. that twice in yeah. one year, no. No, in uh, one, 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 one month. month. My, my, one month. But, yeah. yeah. The Amen. thing is, though. The thing is, though, man, like, I, and the Desha- Shunners knows me. Like, I, I love the game. I've been a fan of his since the first documentary dropped. Um, but the game, to me, has been one of the most consistent rappers throughout his whole career. Yeah. Like, you know, I look at his last four projects, man, and like wow. he always came with it. Like, I like solid albums. Yeah. I mean, the year of the wolf. The Year of the Wolf, I mean, that was iffy. Yeah, it was a flat album. It was like, yeah. like the, the Red album and like yeah. the, the other projects, man. The like the Advocate? game always come with it. The yes. Dr. Advocate yeah, joint like, knocks. That joint knocks. And y'all want to detox? That's detox. Like that whole album is detox. My, my thing with game, what? What the, I'm sorry, go ahead, Chad. Oh, I was just going to say, like, for a person like me, I've never been to California, but like when I listen to the game, it feel like I'm there. Like the imagery yeah. he paint, like the pictures he paint, it feel like I've been there because like he does such a great job of of repping Cali. Like I think he does it well, man. Like I mean, Deshaun is you're from Cali, and Andrew, you guys are from there. Like how do y'all feel like like how he represents the state as a whole? I think, yeah. I think it's well. One thing that's well, that's the thing. Games from LA. We we're up north. We're in Sacramento, so it's a it, we're we're different. Like we're like the equivalent of like a couple of states away from other parts of the country. So we're like it's all love because it's all California, but we're not the same as him down there. So um, you know, and that's when that's one thing. But I, I do I do think he definitely represents that culture, the LA gang culture, and he brings it to the world and he shows people what it's like. Um, I have a kind of an issue with gang with some of that stuff, but that's whatever. <laughs> um, Another show. My, topic. Yeah, my, my, <laughs> the, the, the thing though with, with games album, I didn't like 2.0 that much because unlike the shot is my thing with games. I don't. I think game has a dope voice. He has a dope ass flow. I like when he uses his own voice and his own flow. I don't want to hear you rapping like Kendrick or Kanye or Nas or nobody or Big or none of that. Yeah. To me, it's annoying. I haven't liked the game album in a long time. And when Dang. I heard 2.5, <laughs> wow. when, I, when, I, when, I, when I heard. What, what, when I heard 2.5, I said, like, okay, this is why I like game in the first place all those years ago. This is the game that I like. I don't okay. want to hear game impersonating people. I don't want to hear you be a sock puppet. That's annoying. That's <laughs> oh stupid. So, okay, why not a sock puppet? Okay, Erica, how do you feel about, about the game 2.0? Which, which one do you like the most? The first or the second? First of, I love the 2.5. I love both of them, but 2.5 yeah. is definitely my favorite one because that's how I want West Coast music to sound. And I know I've been hard on the West Coast. Oh, there you go. I'm really not a fan of the TDE <laughs> and all of that. Like, I don't really want to oh. hear Listen to Vince no. Ben Staples' album. Vince Staples' album is crazy. Like, it I know Vince Staples. I, I still don't. I still I want to hear that's the type, the gang, like the that gang culture, that, that little G-funk, the little, like, that's what I want to hear from the West Coast. And that's what I expect West Coast music to sound like. It can't be evolved. It can't be gay back in 2040 with Jericho Juice. That's all I want to hear from the West Coast. I don't want to hear... I don't want to hear the, the, the weirdo rap from TDE. Sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Give me the game rap. For West Coast, if that that to me is what I want to hear from West Coast, that's you can't not a put West them all Coast in the box. Man, and, no, and I that's think it. That, see, California is a big state. There's room for all of us on all other <laughs> areas. So you know, big. California. Yeah, you know I mean. Yeah, and see, I think for me sometimes it gets a little too overdone with game because like he's kind of exactly like, it's, it's kind of stereotypical. So when you kind of out here, it's like man, you giving him just a snapshot. Like he ain't getting. Exactly. Like, we listen to our the local guys, you know, especially the Northern California. Like they like really 
paint that like you know they really paint that picture and like they live it and we like man yeah. I know what this dude is talking about like when a game is real general you know blood it's a whole bunch of bars that anybody can write from another state it's <laughs> blood cuz I was going to Compton High and dude uh, checked me in the crib and I got the red right like it's uh, super like you can tell he ain't been out there in a while but I overlook all that like that's really the low point <laughs> of the album too For real uh, like just spit them bars but I guess it's what that you're kind of stuff. I'm oh, sorry just thought People, when I, when I lived in Maryland, people really thought that everybody in California acted like Snoop, and there was earthquakes every Eric day. <laughs> and we, 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 we Jerry girls, they get khaki suits. And I'm all. like, dog, like this, nothing that's like. That's exciting. That's exciting. I, I, when I think West Coast, I want to feel like Boys in the Hood or something. Like I'm, like I'm, like is watching Boys in the. That's what get I feel like. Get out your core. Get out your core. I get it, I, and, I, and I get that because I get that. That's how I feel about New York rap sometimes because you want to experience something different from where you are from. That's why, I, and then I always talk about Nas being my favorite rapper. I listened yeah. to New York State of Mind Part Two back in '99. When I listened to Part Two, I was like, "Wow, okay, I see everything he's talking. About. I see Queensbridge. I see." Everybody's talking to, so I get that. E, that's how I now became my favorite rapper. So I get that part of it, but to me, game does stuff that's kind of stereotypical, kind of, yeah, and yeah. it's not always. In, it's not because the, the way Nas would do it or somebody else is not that vague. It's not that yeah. that and simple. But, you know, but, game but, but, what's up, bro? With my red rack, I have my red rack. Well, I, if, if you compare it, Eric, everybody doesn't do that. And this blue don't don't means really nothing, by the way. This is a T-shirt. Well, hold, hold on, go to the shadows. Yeah, and people don't really like, like, people think that it's just like Hollywood. Like, people think they like the real, but, like, if we start posting some of that real in the group, if you start hearing some of that Mac Dre and E-40 or, like, the all local, like, the people that locals might listen to up here, like, some of the real right. street stuff, they're going to be yeah. like, oh, like this, where's the bells and whistles? Same way, like, exactly. <laughs> like people want people want the freeway and they want the cast and stuff like that from Philly, but they don't want all the real underground cast is really in Philly. Like, hey, you know, hey. Listen, well, I don't want the real underground cats from Philly. I don't want the real it's underground from cats from Philly. Shout out to Oskino. Shout out to Oskino. Y'all just you want, want y'all just, no, y'all just want the mask out of the state. Y'all want the, y'all want the mask out of the state. But okay, okay so, so I, I, I get that, and um, I like game. First of all, I like games job. My review, the, this what? one, two point five is dope. I think probably both are equal to me. If I had to pick one, I think like the first is just a tad bit better, only because I like the diversity of the production. Um, some of the some of the Man, songs. Man, that song with Drake. That yeah, that one hundred. No, and that circles that one where he's arguing with the girl, and then the yeah. beat switch with Q-tip on it. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. Like, then the New York, New York one. Um, it's just, it's just he. What about the last time you seen Tupac? Yeah, that's my. Yeah, issue. that's the hard. The, the don't, no, the don't trip that last verse. Oh yeah, I, I, I ain't wear blue that much. I ain't wear blue that much. All crip school. I ain't go to school that much. I was on on Elm and so yeah. I was like, oh my god, like this song. Oh, that album is crazy. I'm about to go listen to that joint now. So it's like I like the. It's like I love the first half of the first disc, and I love the second half of the second disc. I look like I love like Eric. I like like some like the G funk stuff. I like that, but I don't want like I've been to Cali and I haven't been to like you know like the Inglewood and all that stuff, but like. California is going to evolve, right? It's an evolution process. I'm not expecting yeah. everybody to sell like Easy E and Ice Cube from '88. Like, I'm not expecting that. Like, we should let them grow. We should let them grow from from Ghost Riding the Whip, or we should let them grow. Like, they would have Ghost Ride, Ghost Ride all day. Exactly. But but you can have your J Rocks. You can have your Mr. Fabs. You can have your your Absol. You can have different cats representing doing different things. Main you know event. I mean? Don't 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 put uh, them in a box. That's what I'm the saying. Thing, the thing is. The thing is, though, man, when the last time in hip hop has one rapper blessed us with two studio albums in the sa in the same he did it in the same month, let alone the same year? I gotta think back to DMX with the yeah. two albums that was just dope. Well, That's the well, last actually, time this ever happened where the rapper last, blessed us with two year, albums in the same year. Last year, E40 dropped three albums in one year. <laughs> We're not gonna get into no details about the content. But just for the question, the man dropped three albums in one year. Shout out to e Oh, day. and shout out to E40. Yeah. But, but, but hold on, we, we know Cali, we know Game is just from LA, but he put every major player 
from yeah. Cali on the album. E forty's up there, and you got J Rock, Ice Cube, Oh Boy, Ice Cube. Don't, oh, that don't trip record is all. Every don't trip, day, homie. I mean, he, he so he not only representing for the Kendrick, he, he not representing for the new West Coast, but also for the old school West Coast too, Erica. If you Which like that, dope. you know what I mean. Yeah, I like the I like I, I for, when I hear West Coast, just give me some. Give, give, I just want to see the Chuck Chuck Taylors, khakis. <laughs> hey, you know hey, what Erica, I mean? <laughs> you, you New York hey, Walt, you, Walt, you, you might know. lose me. Don't get mad. When, when, oh, when true. Listen, okay, <laughs> go ahead, Deshaun. Hey, Eric, when you listen to New York hip hop, do you want uh, do you want Jay to sound like KRS One or like you? Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. I'm going to the shit to get me a drink. You know what? It's hard. I guess because I'm from the East Coast, so like to me, like I don't know, like that that's normal. Like talking like that is normal to me, and and I don't really, I guess I really don't see it. I see it differently from over in the West Coast because I'm I've never been over there. So all I know is from what I watched on Poetic Justice and and Boys in the Hood. You don't want to see that. You want no, no, no. When I'm in California, I'm, I'm in Hollywood. I'm in Burbank. <laughs> I'm in Pasadena. Um, I'm in those nice, safe neighborhoods, Beverly Hills. I have some nice, good friends out the back. I'm over there in Beverly Hills. And Bryant, Bryant, too, is over there as well. They live together. They're, they're a couple. He ain't in um, Boston. <laughs> no. Boston. No, everything Boston. has direct B's, direct <laughs> Beverly Hills, and, you know, you know, Culver City. Um, Crazy. <laughs> oh, no, babe. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you guys so much, man. Uh, so, for the viewers out there, please check out that game album. It is serious, man. Yeah. Um, I, I like this both. I heard people like the second disc more because it's more West Coast G-Funk. But, oh, it's, it's, and before we go, the game, too, is also socially responsible. I know he may be kind of um, glorifying sometimes the gang violence, but he did have a red, a red version of the album and a blue version to, to unite the gangs. He also yeah. has... Some songs in this part two talking about the consequences and stuff like that of it, and his kids, and a whole lot of stuff that he talks about. People mm -hmm. dying. He pays homage to one of his friends who got killed by her her husband, who he was label mates with. So there's there's definitely some mm -hmm. content and some responsibility in the game point of view. So we got to. He, he broke down the he broke down the whole history of the of the history game of the thing too. Yeah. Black yeah, like, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like he he doing a lot with this album, man. It's so dope. It is. So, 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 so I want to shout out everybody that's been commenting, man. We had a lot of comments on the Tupac one. Shout out to Jason100. Keep it 100. Uh, don't bring your to, to my studio. That's my joint. Um, R. Johnson, Kyle Taylor, P. Money, Reno, NV, Quincy, Lionel Bulgin, uh, World's Yours, Romel 1981, actor with a day job, Chiminaki, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Joe H., Spencer, Rock Johnson, 80, Donnie Ray, hey Donnie, um, Stuart Pid, ATT Center, and KC Lorenz. Thank you guys so much for your multiple comments. I appreciate it. If you guys want to shout out, all you got to do is just comment on the video, holler at me, and we'll get that done. Um, any last words? This Shaunas was good. Man, just continue to support the movement, man. It's growing. We appreciate it. It's fun. It's light, but it's real. Um, and just continue to support. Shout out. Support him. Listen to him. Drew, any last words, man? Uh, again, it was great. You guys, E, Shaunas, Chad, Walt, you guys are always awesome. I love doing it. One more thing real quick. I know we're out of time. Nick Cannon, you are insane. You need to stop putting out <laughs> crazy stuff to people. You are out of pocket. You need to chill because that's some weirdo stuff you're posting. I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. <laughs> Nick Cannon said. And, and, since, and since John Breaker and John McClane got alter, ulterior motives from Michael Jackson to the state, I'm in, hard, I'm in charge of like the state. And you out of pocket. Oh and some of the God. pocket episodes, you out of pocket for that too. So I'm going to be asking you incredible because you, you out of pocket. Nick Cannon said Seriously. Chris Brown was a mix of Tupac and, and MJ. That's a whole nother, whole nother episode. And he's, a, and he's insane. Insane with the membrane. Um, Erica, speaking of Ricardo. that. Old, 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 old school, old school hip-hop. Oh, Erica, look. You watch Jerry Curls and the little Kingo hats. Um, any last words? Radio fail. Any last words? Yeah, man, this was crazy fun. I love talking about game album. That really is like one of my favorite albums of this year. I, that the West Coast, like that's that's how it needs to sound. Not not like the Compton album. Oh like my god! But, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, my god. <laughs> but yeah, make sure you follow the Radio Fell on um Instagram, Twitter, man. Like us one more. Like we need one more like on Twitter to a hundred likes. I know that's not a lot, but it's a lot to me. I appreciate it. So um yeah, man, follow us.
and, and send them a package of a khaki suit too, so Erica can live out all her all her West Coast dreams. <laughs> all her West Coast dreams. Get her that and a shade. Chad, any last words, man? Yeah, man. Uh, I just want to thank you for you know doing this, and um, it's it's good to be a part of the show. And I want to um, let everybody know, man, you got to get that new Crit Mix tape, man. It's what's hot right now. Fire, oh, yeah, man. I got to get on it. I've, I've been really busy this weekend. I got to get that Crit tape, man. I got to get it. You yeah, right man, it's what's hot right now. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for supporting. If you want to see more, check out more. Subscribe at YouTube.com slash BMOC TV or BMOC.TV. I am BMOC. Peace.